Today's guest has a relentless dedication to daily progress. Everyone nowadays wants to kind of take that route because it is like a proper job now. You can earn a significant amount of money online doing that sort of thing. I found, especially when I started posting more fitness as well, my female to male ratio has completely changed. Because of the value, the proper value that you're creating, like that's mm. that's a sounds like more of a pure, uh, authentic audience. And when you focus more on the performance thing, you can track the progress by the certain weights you lift in the gym rather than constantly referring back to those photos it's as quantum. well. Give it up for the queen of discipline and the voice of body positivity. Annabelle Ronfell. People want to be part of a winning team. People can find a better version of themselves. If they choose. Hmm. You just need to go start some shit. Action is all that matters. Be a man of your word. I think I look back now and I'm like, well, that took some guts. Be kind. Be kind. Be kind. See you at the top. New episode every Wednesday. Brucey, how was the beach earlier, mate? It's good, mate. We went for a little midday dip, didn't we? Little, little dip. 23 degrees down there, sunny Gold Coast. Beautiful. A few heads around at the surfers. Gorgeous down there. There's lots of, um, I feel like there's lots of travellers down there. Mm, you know there was. I mean? like a few you, heads playing volleyball. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, a few tourists, did you say? Or yeah. backpackers, would you say? Backpackers, yeah, it was beautiful down there. The swell was pretty strong though. Oh, I got swept off my feet. Yeah. Multiple times. It was hectic out there. It was good. It was good. It was good fun. But we, um, we came across a... We're walking up to the beach. We're like, the, the beach isn't in the sun. <laughs> Where's the sun? There's no clouds. That doesn't make sense, Marcus. What do you mean the beach isn't in the sun? Well, there's a big fucking tower that towers <laughs> over the, the main part of Surfers Paradise Beach, which Simon, our mate, oh, <laughs> he's got the penthouse. The king. The king. He's got the penthouse up there. And um, oh, So when he's snapping from his shower, <laughs> he's everyone, put a whole, everyone, put a whole shade yeah, everyone else cold down over on the, the beach. Surfers Paradise. For real? I'm serious. It was really quite amazing. I did genuinely think there was a cloud in front of the sun. Yeah. It's this massive tower that just blocks out. In up. just one spot or look? Like, well, it's not going to be one spot for the whole day, but it... Yeah. yeah. So it moves up the beach? Yeah. Well, just as the as the sun moves, like this time of year, the sun is hanging at its lowest, Benny, as you know, getting into winter. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's at its worst now, but yeah, bang, right over the guts of it. So we had to keep walking to get past the shadow because you want to get the sun. And then sun. the sun's following. Um, oh, the shadow's following you, yeah? There's the oh, sun. Not quite. We weren't there for that long. But. Oh, no. So, <laughs> no. But yeah, it no, was, but we, was quite amazing. Yeah. Like it, it goes to show how big these bloody buildings are. Yeah. I think Simon said he was 72nd story or something like that. Yep. 72nd. And he's got yeah. four of them as well. What, so he's from 68 to... Uh, 72. 72. 72. It's four levels, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while we're swimming in his shade, there's no doubt up top he's swimming... No, he's doing full, arm curls full from the sun. top, yeah. He's full sun in his pool up top. He's soaking it up. I saw some footage of his gym too. Look, I mean, he's got a gym looking over the whole... Of, it's insane, man. It's I, tell insane. You, I tell you what, though, there's something about swimming in the swimming in the ocean. It's actually cured you. Brucey. <laughs> <laughs> Not even kidding. <laughs> oh. Cured him from being a cockhead. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fuck, I was nowhere last night. Yeah, you were dust. I was nowhere. Then. I was nowhere this morning as well. You're yeah. like you were like that last time. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> that was shit. Hey, I've got a, I've got a, <laughs> I got a question. Question. God. Serious one. I've been meaning to ask you boys. You got a pet? Yep. You got a pet? Yep. If your pet got sick, I, I, I got a good mate of mine. He's uh his dog just got bitten by a snake. Shit. And he ends up, ends up in the snake like in the pet ICU or whatever. Cash register. Yep. The question is, how much would you spend to sort of save your pet? Well, hang on. Can I? I, I we had a cat, Nugget. Shout out to Nugget. Oh, what a legendary name! Yeah, Nugget. Nugget he was. Yeah. He's a really cool cat. And my sister, <laughs> he spent. She spent um, probably close to two grand on Nugget. He got a little infection on his in his toes and yeah, had, to get, had paw, to get paws, mate. On the paws, sorry. <laughs> and I had to get two, two, two little paws cut off, so amputated, right? Bullshit. Anyway, cost my sister two grand, cone, fucking going to the vet every other week, get checked in, let Nugget out one day, September last year, and he never came home. <laughs> so she's probably spent maybe two grand within three, four months on and Nugget, and then he never came home about three months later. But is she content with that because she had a crack? Oh. She tried for Nugget. Mm, we love Nugget a lot. She tried. How, how old was Nugget? Oh, we'd have him, had him probably three years. 
He was young. Oh, that's that's oh, pretty so, that, so that's got merit as well because I was going to the age thing, Benny. You know, because these things, these pets aren't around forever either. True. Yeah, but this was like this was Sarah's like. This so so pet. you're saying if it's a bit younger, you'll spend more. If it's oh, but that's in theory. But in reality, the older they are, the deeper the connection. Yeah. And the more oh, you prepare, you prepare to dig in. You know. So mm. I'll tell you, my mum. Uh, God bless my mum. Is not with us anymore. But my mum loved her cat. Um, and its name was Tom and it got sick and she spent all this money and um, ended up getting nicknamed MasterCard Tom because <laughs> uh-huh. my me, me mum paid for it all on yeah. the MasterCard. One of my uncles made like a wooden plaque, plaque when Tom eventually died with an eye patch on, on, the, on the cat and then a, a MasterCard on the tummy. Anyway, what's the number, PK? How much, how much would you spend? Because... Shout out to Ruggers because the the the, the, oh, the Ruglio, he's yeah. a good friend of the pod. Yeah, Ruggers, man, he's a legend. So the, the the reality of the the actual situation is he's got two dog he's got two dogs, and just before Christmas, one got bitten and uh, and it died. It didn't it didn't survive. Shit. And then literally, like in the last couple of months or maybe last uh, month, his uh, another his other dog got a another new one and got bitten by a snake as well man but this time this time he was there he saw the dog out in the backyard um like playing up or whatever so went out to see what was going on and there was like a log and he just sort of flipped the log over and when he flipped the log over the the snake pounced on the uh on the um dog bit the dog and he was able to get it to the to the vet or whatever and then it spent you know days in icu do you know them the figure? No, I don't know the figure, but that made me wonder. I should ask Ruggers, but um, he's got plenty anyway, so he's all right. <laughs> but <laughs> he's got plenty, so he, that one wouldn't have been a fucking question for him. But being a frugal guy myself, <laughs> and I do love my, my pets, mm. how much would you spend, man? Like, where do you tap out? Where do you tap out? You, have you, you've got dog. You've got a dog. Two. You've got two dogs. So how much? Like, are you ten? Would you do ten? What's the probability of them getting through? Well, they go... Not like the young nugget. 80%. 80%. We'll nugget call it 80. Nugget made it through. <laughs> he, he made it through. Man, and then he just said... He decided to not come home. Going on a road trip. Ah, oh, true. Soon, yeah. PK. Yeah. No, we... Yeah. All right. What's your number, PK? Oh, I don't know. When you got kids that love them and stuff like that. You're just going to... Oh, no. Do you round it out at 10? Yeah. Well, I've got a dog, Maggie. She's 14. And I reckon she's been to the vet maybe three times. She's a saint. There's nothing wrong with... Oh, her legs are a bit... Cool. She gets the arthritis. But would you, would you, would you drop ten if you know if I think I think you know. Got, let's say she got hit by a car tomorrow. Broke. You know. Broke. I think quality of life comes into it. Oh yeah, well, yeah. What's that look like? Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I think, yeah, I think you still, thing. I think you still want your dog to be happy and playful. But yeah. yeah. Otherwise, oh, that's a good point because otherwise it becomes a bit selfish, right? And that happened with uh, shout out Bella, <laughs> my old Bella. I had for 15, 16 years, and we had to put her down maybe 18 months ago and yeah, we held on me and Joe held on we'd had a before the kids I often mm. told the kids that I, it was my favourite child <laughs> and they go awesome. oh, I'm your favourite I go no 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 <laughs> Bella's my favourite but um, yeah like and it got that's where we found ourselves right where we're going you know she's not well we can try and keep her here longer for us but for her it was time oh yeah well then no yeah. Anyway, that's a bit depressing, boys. That's a bit Sorry. Dark. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got, Bruce? You got something over there that can liven us up? Oh, I don't know. Just the Gold Coast weather. It's just way better than Melbourne. <laughs> Amazing. And we've got an awesome guest today, guys. She's travelled a long way. In lots fought of traffic. off traffic and car crashes and everything. So and calendar invites and <laughs> <laughs> Benny mucking up the times. Yeah. Um, so we're very grateful to have her down. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Australia's number one podcast. We are the Little Fish and we speak to the big fish about town each and every week. Please like, share, subscribe, drop us a comment, drop us a thumbs up. We love it. We love it, Brucey. Today's guest has a relentless dedication to daily progress. She's a powerhouse in all things fitness, nutrition and discipline with a massive following on social media and a passion for spreading positivity and empowering others. It's all about the given, boys. It's all about the given, I tell you this. She's a fitness coach, influencer. Influencer? Influenza. No, influencer. (laughs) And advocate against online body shaming, using her platform to share her powerful message and uplift women everywhere. This is awesome. Did I write that? Yeah, this is you, man. Fuck. That's good. Thanks. So prepare to be inspired, motivated, and educated. 
as we dive into the world of fitness and unpack her rise to the top. Give it up for the queen of discipline and the voice of body positivity, Annabelle Ronfeld. Yay! Yeah. I don't even remember writing that. That's a good <laughs> that intro. Good. That's a good intro, man. Thanks, I'm a bit man. pumped, especially the bullshit you were talking about before. <laughs> that's that's, gotta, spru- that's gotta, spru- gotta, yeah, spruce things back up. Spruce things back up. It's awesome. Annabelle, thanks so much for coming in. That's a lot to live up to. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot to live up to. It's all true. <laughs> Mate, it's all, it's all there. Let's hope so. So, Annabelle, awesome to have you on. Uh, and you're doing some really good things by the sounds of it. Yeah, this year is kind of taken off. Um, I know when we record the part, the podcast, it's not out yet, but it will be when this comes out. But I'm also joining the Move With Us team as their next coach with Rachel Dillon and all of that, which yeah. is pretty yeah. cool. Well, wait. So, um, Congratulations. Yeah. And yeah, well done. actually, I'll probably be back from Bali by the time this gets out, but they've got a Move With Us retreat in three weeks that I'll also jump on as well. So be in Bali for a week. Nice. Yeah. Oh, sounds Half like a tough, luck. tough gig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Half your luck. Um, Annabelle, awesome. Can you take us back, um, you know, where did this passion for fitness and, and helping others as well by the sounds of it, you know, like helping others through, you know, through your messaging and that sort of stuff sounds amazing. Where did it all come from? Yeah, so I've always been sporty growing up, did touch and athletics throughout school. And then I only really ventured into the gym after school because there's not a lot of avenues for rep sport once you leave school. So I still wanted to stay active and still move my body in that way. So I ventured into the gym, um, kind of figured out what I was doing on my own, didn't really have anyone to guide me as such. I tried a few apps, um, but... Yeah, didn't really know what I was doing. And then I kind of ventured into the group fitness space, learned stuff there and it makes the world a difference when you're surrounded by others who can also motivate you. You can make friends, join up, um, organize a time to go to the gym together and everything. And then I guess from there I went into another gym and I found my niche, the type of um, movement I like to do. And yeah, just kind of kept growing from there. And then I started posting a few things of what I was doing. And then it just eventually grew and grew and grew and gained momentum from there. What do you, what do you attribute that sort of really, you know, aggressive growth to, you know, on these platforms? You know, I'm, it's out of our generations. It's more, you know, <laughs> you guys are, you know, creating jobs from it these days. But what do you attribute that sort of crazy, crazy following from? Um, I think it's mostly if you have something to actually give or a sort of sort of value you can provide. I see a lot of, I know everyone nowadays wants to kind of take that route because it is, or well, everyone's blowing up um, and it is uh, like a proper job now. You can yeah. earn a significant amount of money online doing that sort of thing. Um, and that's obviously, um, yeah, everyone wants to do that. So... I think the point of difference is if you can actually give people something they they can take from it, whether that's encouraging people to um, get in the gym, eat clean, um, lift or be strong rather than lose weight and trying to be as skinny as possible. Because you see all over social media, especially, it's quite – it's better now – but it, it was to that point where everyone's trying to be as small as possible. You see all these yeah. models out there. You see everyone out there like size two and stuff. And I think the point of difference that I might be able to provide is encouraging girls to know like you should actually eat, fuel your body. It's okay to lift weights. It's okay to want to be strong in the gym as well, not just yeah as small as possible. I yes. just want to uh-huh. take you back to when you first started posting things on social media and how you know i assume you sort of took your standard account that you used to run just you know privately Mm. and then started posting fitness and and things like that how did that how did you go personally transitioning from you know posting gym um content and and fitness and and well-being and stuff to you know maybe old photos where you know out dressed up and and whatnot how was that yeah yeah obviously initially it was just like a standard Instagram I just post when I was mm. dolled up and looked good. Was it always private? Was it private at all or was it always um, public? Only for a small amount of time. I think I went public when I was oh, like 3,000 or something. So pretty soon. Um, but yeah, it was scary at first because a lot of people, I don't know, a lot of people don't want to just see that. Mm. They, um, I feel like when you are trying to grow, you following is going to like even out a little bit and the people who just want to 
or really like seeing the fitness stuff, that's the um, type of audience you'll attract. And then I found, especially when I started posting more fitness as well, my female to male ratio has completely changed. When I was just posting my everyday life, it was probably interesting, like 60% male and 40% female. And now that I've started post more, it's 70% female and 30% male, which is, yeah, crazy. I think can only benefit yourself because you're obviously promoting. I'm so stoked about it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You've got all these creepy dudes. That's for you, the creeps. creeps. Is that why you don't follow her anymore, Marcus? (laughs) 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 Nah, just But is is that because of the value, the proper value that you're creating? Like that's, Mm. that's a, sounds like more of a pure, uh, authentic audience. Yeah. If, yeah. So if I put in my caption, for example, like how I'm feeling, blah, blah, blah. I don't think a lot of guys really care about that. So like (laughs) unfollow. Um, Or spurting workouts. I don't think guys are going to be like, oh, yes. Some do. Some do actually. But also work on my pelvic floors today. (laughs) (laughs) And also if you're promoting, you know, Products that are you know targeted towards females as yeah. well. That having that audience, I can only assume is a it's a lot thing. more profitable. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> obviously brands like, oh cool, we're a women's only brand, but you've got a seventy percent male following. Maybe mm. not. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, mm. do they ask when when you do these sort of brand deals and stuff? Do you need to show them the analytics and stuff? Do they actually go into your account and see, or you sort of just tell them what you've got and what the engagement and stuff is? Yeah. So. I'm with management at the moment and they have on file all of my insights, all of my ratio, like countries, demographic, all of that. And then live. So it's feeding through live or they just no, take no, no. time. Just stamps. like monthly. I send okay. it through if there's been a big update and stuff. And then they send that to the brands because brands really want to see that at TikTok, especially as well. Yeah. Right. Hey, yeah. one thing you mentioned was, um, you, when you were going to all the different gyms and stuff, you eventually found your movement. Yeah. Can you tell us what that is? Yeah, so it's more functional. It's strength, but also cardio as well. So more focused on being fit and lifting weight rather than kind of just going in like, okay, I want to train shoulders or like I want to mm. look like this rather than, yeah, how performing, I uh, guess. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, looks versus performance. Yeah, I think your performance, sorry. Yeah, how you train, I guess is similar to the way I train in, in that you do your your strength training and your running and and everything else, mm. and the the looks sort of just come naturally yeah, as well. Exactly. And, and and you you feel better about yourself as yeah. well. Yeah. As soon as yeah, I fo- started focusing on that, the looks came, and then that's when kind of my body image issues kind of disappeared. Sort of, mm. they're still like they're never gone, but it got a hell of a lot better. That's for sure. Did you have body issues? Body, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is because you don't look like you'd have body yeah, issues. Yeah, not but anymore. But, um, yeah, but definitely when I was trying to find my feet, for sure. Like my camera, or oh, it was full of progress photos. Like I take photos every single week, try and see if I was progressing, which obviously wow. you don't progress in yeah. like a week. So I there was the nothing. Thing. Yeah, and, 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 <laughs> you know, and, yeah. You, and you know the key to that is like when you're doing things for the wrong reasons and then you're tracking it and it's not working, mm-hmm. that's when you stop. Yeah. So if you can find a greater purpose than like you said which mm. is what you found then regardless whether those results are coming or not you've got a greater purpose mm. so you keep doing it and then eventually it pans mm. out and you start to see the results yeah and when you focus more on the performance thing you can track the progress by the certain weights you lift in the gym rather than constantly referring back to those photos it's as quantifiable, well quantifiable being quantifiable i love that that's <laughs> so a big, a big word <laughs> no, no, well we talk about it a bit so yeah, yeah you can yeah, there's numbers and there's actual thing rather than just yeah. you know looking at yourself in the mirror and yeah. oh why is this not happening changing or this not changing yeah. Yeah. it can be the light it can be the mirror it that's can be right. your perception your you know you can sort yeah, of yeah there's so many other factors brain. that play into it rather than yeah. just scales and, and a photo so and you're the last one to notice anyway because you see yourself every single day whereas yeah. people notice before you because they'll be like a month apart or so and so where they see you like yeah mm. yeah spot on at what uh at what sort of level of you know following and attention did you have to get to before you were like, all right, cool, this might be a job or um, Um, I can make a go of this? It's only really end of last year that I started really um, earning a significant amount through social media and I was able to drop back from coaching even more because I was full-time coach every day, like six, five days a week. 
and only dropped that down to three days a week, I think, in September, October last year. Yeah. And then it's just kind of grown from there. And does that mean you put a lot more time into curating your content and, and yeah. you know? I was kind of almost forced to take a step back from coaching, which I actually really enjoy because content just takes so long to do and edit, especially. Especially now that reels are such a big thing, they take forever and that's all brands want. Which do, you is edit, do you edit? Yeah. You do your own editing. Yeah. That's epic. So Premiere Pro. What, <laughs> no, CapCut. Cap no, uh, Cap, <laughs> Bonnie, write that one down, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So would you say... The brands love the reels because are you doing like organic, you're sort of organically integrating product or are you actually doing, you know, I guess skits or, or planned sort of placements? Yeah, I definitely have to sort of plan it out. Usually a brand will come to you with the type of reel they want, which makes my life so much easier because it's left less creativity on my part. But yeah, usually they say a certain thing that they want and then you just... Yeah, I will never do something that I really don't want to do or uncomfortable doing. Uh, usually, it's stuff that I use anyway. Yeah. And do you think you'll ever you'll keep always editing, or do you think you know that you keeps you, blowing up? Well, <laughs> oh no, because I, I just sort of look at it and go because I know like I, as you know like when we first started posting your or for your channel back in the day uh, the educational stuff I used to do the editing. And, um, and it is time consuming mm. and it's never ending. Mm. And, um, but I found that we've obviously got Bonnie now, but I found like work, you're kind of getting stuck working in the business. Mm. Whereas if you can empower someone else to do that, which is hard to let go, mm. but if you can empower someone else to do that, you find yourself then working on the business, which is like, that's the fuel on the fire to can keep blowing it up. Right. Because mm. other people, if other people can do the edit, then you can then focus on doing the things that the other people can't do, yeah, which is creating. the creating. Yeah. And, and I think the, it did. If it got to that point, then 100%, like you said, it's a lot, it's better if you can focus on just the creation rather than the back end stuff as well. So it's hard to let yeah. go though, isn't it, as well? Because once you start editing, it, it's, it's fun. It's, mm, you know, yeah. it's a creative thing. I think I, if I ever ventured down the YouTube path, I'd probably try and <laughs> offload that because I have a couple of friends who do that and they, just takes for them forever to edit it yeah because obviously they're longer than reels are only like 30 seconds whereas youtube videos are over 10 minutes so i can imagine how tedious that would be how do annabelle is is there is there a plan like we you know we've got our own business and that sort of stuff and you look at forecasting you look at where you want to be how you're going to get there for you know running what you're doing you know that growth trajectory and that sort of thing is there a plan in place you know is is there goals in place and and working out how you can maybe get to those you know next level of attention well a big goal for this year was to release programs and become a move with us coach so that's happening yeah. now which is cool tick yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i got back from perth last week and i was over there shooting a collaboration active work collection as well so that's also, oh, that's yeah, epic. yeah, which was a really big one as well. So those two kind of, I actually got the text on both of those on the same day. Wow. That was a great day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was day. yeah, that wasn't the same day we reached out, was it? <laughs> <laughs> that day was even better. <laughs> Legend. Well, that's yeah. The, those things must give you a crazy kick along. Yeah, just to be like, I'm rolling here. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it's going to fully set in until. Well, they're probably both out, but until they release and I'm like, yeah. okay, wow, and... this is sick. Or like when I release the program and people start tagging me actually doing the program, I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. So yeah. these online, is it, would you call it online coaching? Yeah. Yeah. So is it like a subscription that these people are paying to, to use your service and you're checking in with them and yeah. how does that oh, sort of work? Not as hands-on as that. Yeah. It's kind of just a community platform thing and you... Well, I think there's there'll be five coaches, I think, and yeah. each coach has a program and then you can kind of subscribe to the app and choose what program you'd like to do and if you follow it on for six weeks. Yeah, so I'm looking at now, you've got the strong program, power program, busy girl workouts, four different girls, about to be five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're about to squeeze them up a bit. <laughs> yeah. Nice work. And that's, yeah, that's just... Yeah, that's just progression, isn't it? Like, yeah. So all of it on an app, you just need to subscribe to the one app. And these yeah, guys have already got the community, right? So they're yeah. going to draw. They're going to. They've already got a platform. It's almost mm. like a Netflix sort of platform for you know these mm. programs. 
And then you're you're plugging in oh, your just, community yeah. and which is I'm grateful for move with us because yeah I don't have to obviously start from scratch and everything I don't have to work out how an app runs and stuff I am able to still release the programs with kind of the help and support of the community which is pretty cool and their infrastructure and stuff so you can just focus on the program yeah is there a vision would you say to to get to a point where you're able to to you know have your own app or run this whole program with no other backing and it's just yourself I haven't thought about that so far I have to kind of, just kind of be mo- um, caught up in that, but mm. that would be pretty cool yeah. if it was to get to that. Um, we'll see how this next few years goes. Yeah. Mm. Well, you're only going up, so. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. hopefully, hopefully I don't <laughs> <laughs> do anything controversial. Oh, he's drawing a gamble, that'd be good. What's it like getting, you know, I'm assuming you get people reaching out and saying, like, you've helped me do this or you've, mm. you know, you've given me the confidence to do that. Um you know, being that sort of leader in that in that space, like how how fulfilling is that? Yeah, it's pretty cool, and I get a lot of people asking for advice and stuff like that. But I can't get back to all of them. But the amount of even on the weekend when I was in Melbourne, actually, I had about five girls recognize me in Melbourne, come up to me and like say how grateful they are for me. So that was pretty cool. That's kind of a surreal moment when you do get recognized in public. It's like... PK had one of them the other day. (laughs) He did. He did. You were talking about it in the front. In the front. Someone driving past in a car. Yeah. Tooting the horn. I love the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) No, it was a pretty surreal moment. (laughs) (laughs) He was still going on about it the next day. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah like i I guess for someone like yourself that's actually helping people and um you know they might have lost weight transformed their body um even more so just transformed their mindset and Mm. you know the beliefs that you you know you're breaking down yeah i think it's more yeah the mindset thing is pretty cool because obviously i've been there and when you do switch over it is pretty rewarding feeling Mm. yeah yeah, yeah. So that was affecting you a fair bit mm. and, and you're able to work through it. So you're an example of um, switching that. Yeah. So when girls talk about that, I know exactly where they've been and I know that there is um, light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Can, can I ask about like two questions? So when you flicked it at about 3000 to go public, um, was the plan to turn it into a business? You what you were like, you know, what, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a crack at turning this into a business. And then as you just started to come up and blow up, hate negative comments. There's always tall poppy syndrome in the comments and stuff on so, social media. Did you get much of that? And um, what was that experience like? And how do you deal with that? I'm pretty fortunate. I don't really get much hate at all. I think you're spreading such a positive message. It's hard for someone to come in and yeah. The only know. kind of weird comments is from creepy guys every now and then <laughs> but like everyone's gonna get them but um yeah no real hate at all which i'm thankful for because i don't think i'd be able to deal with it very well but yeah i think it's just the type of content don't really post too many controversial things yeah i think when you're coming out and posting good positive stuff just about empowering yourself and mm. other people that yeah it take a fair person to come in and hate on that yeah. so <laughs> um but back to your other question did i ever plan on doing that absolutely not i was studying chiropractic at uni yeah right yeah so i was gonna be a chiropractor did you, <laughs> you <laughs> crack that neck. <laughs> yeah um no no did so you finish I, though did you finish no so i deferred last year when things were kind of blowing up i was like okay i'll put effort into this and see how it goes and then it kind of blew up even more and then going back into this year i had to make the decision whether to go back or not at all so well, was that a big decision would you say or you just knew um, I just felt like I'd be ripping myself off if I didn't explore this and I'm very glad that I did because of these two opportunities that have come up. Three mm-hmm. opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll always be there. Yeah. That's a fallback. Exactly. Yeah. Go back and wrap that up. It is a five year degree. So it was a, I was halfway. Halfway. Mm. Wow. Well. Yeah. And I would um, have had to do all the prac and stuff this year, which was would have been very full on. That's Pretty time heavy. consuming and you're not getting paid. <sighs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paying to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it sounds like this sort of stuff, do you got to grab the opportunity when it's there? Mm. Like you've gone from, you know, that amount of following to bloody heaps. Mm. I feel like, you know, if you think you're going to park that over there for a bit and kind of like that won't be there anymore. Yeah, is exactly. that is staying relevant and mm. staying front of mind and growing the audience. Like Benny tells me all the time, if you're not, 
if you're not if you're standing still, you're going backwards in mm. this game. Like the, you start to get forgotten, and mm. the algorithm starts to hate on you, and all that sort of stuff. Is that something that's really front of mind that you got to put a lot of it, time into? Yeah, I never realized how much time and effort and kind of it's always in the back of your mind because obviously it's not like a typical job you go to work you're there for seven eight hours you go home and you switch off yeah because it's my job you kind of always think about like oh i should be posting this on my story oh i should be taking a photo of this to put later which is it can be very draining at times but yeah. i guess that's reality of it because it is that's that's, that's a yeah that's an interesting way you just mentioned that when mm. people go to a, a normalish job mm. it's sort of you do your job and you go and do that but you've got to stay ahead of it you've it's got to stay wheel, stay relevant yeah. it's the hamster yeah. wheel just, just yeah, keeps on off. turning yeah 100% um will you ever like like have any fear of failure like most people that get into your position might talk themselves out of like backing themselves in mm. just out of that fear of failure or especially so publicly mm. because you're putting yourself out there publicly to say hey I'm this person and this is what I'm doing and I'm gonna you know people I guess you're gonna try and make a living or you are gonna make a living was there was there a time where you thought this isn't gonna happen or was there a time where you were like almost talking yourself out of it because you're like man okay what if it doesn't work everyone's gonna know it didn't work or I think it was more so the fear of other or people who know me kind of judging me. Um, obviously, the people who know you at the start and the people who genuinely want you to succeed, they'll be supportive of you no matter what. But I feel like everyone who's putting themselves out there, people will disconnect from you, be like, oh, that's a bit weird what she's doing, not support you. But yeah, the people who genuinely want you to succeed will follow you and rise you up. Yeah, is that a way of culling out the ones that maybe aren't pure? Yeah, um, maybe. All the boys from Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to talk about your Strava because Peter's on Strava. <laughs> it's Peter's new favourite form I'm of social media. I'm trying to get clout, but yeah. I love Strava. I want to be famous on Strava, so blow up my Strava. Well, you, yeah, Bruce, what is it? Marcus Bruce yeah, on Marcus Strava. Bruce, yeah. Can you put pictures <laughs> of your, plug. Your, 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 your pepper, what are they called, your... Hot chili bloody budgies oh, nah. on there. No, I'll get <laughs> a, blow you got up, a few man. triathlon photos in there. But Well, you came in the other day and was like, or yesterday, I was like, here's Annabelle, she's gone for a run. Blah, 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 oh, blah, yeah. Blah. <laughs> oh, the old Strava store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I didn't even realise I was dropping him in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> making conversation. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Oh, we do our research. Um, no, I've actually got a half How fast did she go? Was she moving or what? Well, and you say you had got a half marathon. Now we know. Marathon in the <laughs> yeah, I would have done two of them by the time this comes out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, we um, yeah, we we love running between the three of us. Mm. Benny's done a done a full marathon and done one and done. PK's on a on a mission now. I do a bit. I'm going to do one, hundred percent, one day. A full, yeah. a full one. 100%. Yes. There is only on, the man. full one. I'm running with you. I'm riding a bike next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I do a bit of running myself. Do a half marathon come up in July I did a few triathlons at the end of the year and I'm doing half Ironman in November which is a bit jeez you sound like alright tickets dad. move on okay. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> no, I'll, do, I'll do a bit of running <laughs> no, 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 no. practically in the Olympic team <laughs> oh, <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very fast but anyway um, yeah talk to us about how you're running and, and how you implement your running into your programming because a lot of people I, mean, I know I was like that I I I hated running. I'd never mm. do it. And I was almost a bodybuilder, right? And then yeah. now I started running and I see the strength and how much better you feel going mm. for a run. Talk to us about that and, and yeah. what it's done for yourself. So my parents and my brother, they're all into triathlons, half marathons, everything. Mum, she's in the Australian team for triathlons. Shit. We need to get mum on. We need to get mum on. Oh, man. Oh, she's a weapon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm learn a thing or two, I reckon. Uh -huh. um, yeah, my brother and dad the same. My dad, will, he's doing the half on Sunday as well. He's... Be way ahead How of old's me. dad? Oh, <laughs> 52, 53, yeah, right. I think. Legend. Yeah, what a legend. he did a half Iron Man not long ago. Mum did one last year. Anyway, <laughs> enough about them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but every Saturday, because park run, I assume. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every Saturday, mum would be like, oh, you want to come do park run? But absolutely not. You won't catch me running dead. <laughs> um, and then I think la start of last year, there, this is, I don't know if you've heard of it. There's this mega run. Yeah, I know. That's mega on run. a yeah. Sunday. So I've done. I think I did one up on the Gold Coast when I shout out to Harry. He took me to a mega yeah. run. Uh, so, oh, yeah, it was a mega run on the Gold Coast like last year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So a couple of my friends started going to that, and I kind of tagged along. 
And yeah, started giving me a crack. I was dying at the start. Um, didn't do the full 10 for the first couple ones because uh, 10 was just so unattainable. And then. Love hearing that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny looking back at it now because I'm like, Happens oh, to all of us. It's all right. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, yeah, just kind of kept going from there, tend to get a little bit easier. But then it was only when I started training for a half. I realized how much more beneficial it is to actually let go of your ego, slow down, just focus on getting the distance done because mm. you're so much less wrecked afterwards. Yeah. Like mm. I'd finish 10K, I'd be like, oh my God, I need like two weeks to recover from that because my body just in shambles. But now it's, yeah, slow down, you'll be all right. Yeah, build your aero, big base. They yeah, say, the yeah, big base. Yeah, the 80 <laughs> 20 base. Like you should be doing 80% of your runs slow yeah and maybe 20 percent fast that louis louis talks about that yeah. that's what i've seen him talk about yeah that. he's massive yeah. on it yeah yeah, for yeah. Sure. that's the first time i actually seen it yeah <laughs> i actually i went for a run this morning and put louis sunday run in the in the ears and, and went for i a cannot run to a podcast really no i really like louis because he, he checks in with you and <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah he goes oh you might be two three k's in and you oh, should be cool. feeling oh he good. does like a like a meditation for podcast oh, not, or for nah, running it's, nah, it's more like it's a general one co- foot general, in front of the other nah, nah, it's, not, <laughs> no, no, it's, it's just more general conversation and then checks in every 15 minutes with you some i don't know i like i don't mind podcasts while you're running because you can i did a, a long run the other week and i i think i put put a podcast in for a bit of like research yeah with, with our guests and whatnot it's and good you, to slow you down as yeah well. it is if you're doing a long run slow long run you can yeah it's good yeah. but other times I, yeah I'd, I'd, I'd can you do it with no with nothing because yeah, that's I that's can't. i can't do really? it with nothing man nah. cool well, me that's how i started running i was no headphones and just i'd start running before the sun came up no headphones i watch the sun come up and that's to- that's torture that's for me man. yeah that's no, torture. I, <laughs> I, I mean i've been on runs where i've like literally put music up so loud i can't hear anything else but mm. yeah that's um i don't know what do you listen to I don't make any of my own playlists and I'm scared to say what I listen to out of fear of judgment. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you got to t- <laughs> <laughs> community doesn't <laughs> judge. <laughs> I literally just search running playlists on Spotify. And oh, just really? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> and what are they? A bit of EDM and stuff? or <laughs> well, Whatever I feel yeah. like doing on that day. <laughs> Do you know people put like... You know when people play the piano and they have that like ding, 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 ding. The metronome. Yeah, people put Metro- that in metronome. at 180, 180 BPM. They just want- a ding. Yeah, just a ding. And like, because the cadence... Just keep their bait, yeah, the rhythm. 180 cadence is supposedly the ideal cadence and people mm. put that in their ears so that every single step they take and it's in step. It's in, in sync with that. But yeah. what's, what, what pace are you moving at? Because that's, that's going to be a different... Or are you going to be moving no, at a well, pace? No, uh, well, it depends. Or is it's, that training for... Because you try yeah. not to keep pace for like marathons and stuff's a real thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because like you said, if, if, mm. if you're going a little bit too fast, you, you blow up. Yeah, it's more well, cadence is a whole different thing. It's how many steps per minute you're taking. So they're trying yeah, to. Yeah, I think uh, it should stay the same, shouldn't it? You just yeah. like lengthen the stride out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, yeah, because mm. if you're going, if you're running to the beat, mm. it's going to be the same amount of steps. Mm. Mm. Unless you're doing mm. half beats. Yeah. Hey, can, <laughs> can, can I ask Annabelle? Yeah. So can you sort of talk us through how when you transitioned from going to uni, how your days started to change, like what a, what a typical day maybe looked like at the start when you were on the come up and you were trying to, and you were no doubt hustling. Mm. And then I guess into like today, how that sort of changed. You sort of touched on it a little bit before where you were five days a week down to three days a week. Mm-hmm. But yeah, what the typical day looked like back then and then the transition into what a typical day might look like today as an influencer. Yeah, so, oh gosh. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, is that, is that a, well, as a fitness guru. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's funny because that's what I am, so I have to deal with it. But um, <laughs> do, you, do, you find, do you find that a bit of a, I suppose because you hear it so much, you would, mm. it starts to it's get It's got a, a negative, negative kind of Does it? in that world. Mm. I Does think it? when it started, it's. Oh, I bullshit, like man. I, just, I reckon all the kids on the come up would be going, I want to be an influencer be a like Annabelle. Soon, don't they? You're a yeah. lifestyle coach. I'm just kind of a sharing. Yeah, my journey, just, not yeah, yeah I which feel, means you're influencing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I to say it. Oh, you got to make ways yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I was a full time coach. That was, oh, I definitely burned out from this, but it was yeah Monday to Friday. Every second Saturday, I'd coach in the morning, and then the other coach would drop on. But for example, on a Monday, say if I coached from five to nine in the morning and then I'd go home have brekkie and stuff and I'd go train around 11 12 then I'd rush home 
And then I had it like a two, three hour period of time where I would have to smash out any branded content I would have to do. And then I, at this time I didn't have a manager either. So I had to look through emails as well. And then I would go back in the afternoon to go coach from 4.30 to 7 after pack up and stuff. And then I'd go home edit whatever content I had done that day and then after editing I had to jump on email emails and quickly reply to anything there and then go to bed and repeat the next day so when I got management it was like a breath of fresh air taking that load off my chest so I didn't have to worry about emails anymore and for the people playing at home that's what it takes, right? Like mm. people from the outside looking in would be so quick to turn around. Yeah, and go, look, at this, look at this pretty girl just posting yeah, some stuff yeah, yeah. and she's blown up. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, like, doesn't have a job. Like, yeah, yeah, like, especially yeah. Coaching, if you're but, handling a full time job on top of social media, yeah. I wouldn't. But even yeah. if you're not, right? Like yeah. it just, you know, that's, as, a, as, that's a full day. Yeah, and men, the creative, you would know better than anyone, but this creative stuff just cooks the brain because, mm. like, it's the hamster wheel. Mm. You've just got one out, but that's great. You're on to the next mm. sort of thing. And that's why at the moment I do Monday and Friday, those full days. So if I have to get content done on that day, it's exactly the same as that day minus emails. And that's what I had to do on Monday. And it's, yeah, it gets a lot. Can you talk us through the manager? Like like mm-hmm. how big of a help that that has been? Because mm. is that the thing that was weighing you down or holding you back? Is you, you needed to try and sift through the emails, the opportunities or, or whatever it might be? Yeah. And I think... Also, because I was so new to it, I had no idea what to counteract and say, okay, you want this, oh, this will require this much money. Like I had no oh, idea. So that, like so that negotiating. Charge, so yeah. knowing what your worth was. Yeah. And I was lowballing so hard. <laughs> the That's all right. I'll just do it for you. No That's idea. all right. Yeah. But was the low ball still good at that time? So you're thinking no. like, how good is this? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Because I had no idea. So yeah. I was like, oh, okay, this. They're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> But um, yeah, as soon as I got the management, obviously they take all the emails and stuff and they know like if your engagement's this, if you're following this, oh, we can charge this much for a certain thing. And um, yeah, when they got back to that and they started sending deals, so I was like, whoa, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, geez, I'm glad I started doing this management <laughs> yeah. thing because yeah. you're underselling yourself a bit at the start. Mm. And how'd yeah. you find the manager? Yeah, great. Yeah. No, no. How, how did you find them? Like, as, as in, did they like, come to you? Did they come or? to you? Oh, or, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. They approached me. Yep. On so just randomly, right. you weren't thinking of a manager. Someone's just going, "Hey, we're seeing." I what was. Doing. Yeah, I had a few friends who are managed, and I started thinking about it, but I didn't have any steps in place to actually get one yet. And it's good because they put everything I need to do in a calendar, so it keeps me accountable. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I would be losing my head. <laughs> yeah. So like a boss. Yeah. That's good. Yep. That's awesome. Awesome. Um, Annabelle, so what's, you know, you've told us about some of the stuff you're working on, which, which sounds, you know, sounds super exciting. Um, I was just going to say what's next, you know, like what, like, you know, you're working with these guys on the app. Mm-hmm. Um, how much of a workload is that going to be, you know, is that going to change? Your week in, week out. Oh, she's going to Bali. She's going to get a tan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a few bin tangs. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to Bali too, so I just hope I don't get Bali, Bali. Oh. But, uh, well, you yeah. get a free drip now, can't you? Hey. Anyway, I'm talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> will, that, will that increase your workload, being a part of that team? Um, yeah, it will. But hopefully... Oh, yeah, no, it won't decrease it at all. <laughs> but yeah, it'll allow me to give people programs and that's what I've something I've been wanting to do for ages. And even if, see how, so I'm coming on board and it'll be announced, so it's all right. But uh, I'm coming on board for a challenge. So I'm not uh. releasing my set own, own program yet, but depending on how this challenge goes and how many people like my style of training and stuff, there's opportunity to then do a set program in the future so that will probably be end of the year around then what's awesome. what's the challenge look like how many weeks is that it's six six, six weeks. weeks yeah i speak i've heard i mean i've done i've had online personal trainers in the past and and whatnot and i've he- seen other things where people say you know there's six weeks uh you might start to notice a difference in your body mm. eight weeks is when other people start noticing yeah and when you start hitting that 10 12 weeks of you know that consistent real consistency is just when you just go to that another level like, mm. yeah i think they choose six weeks just because that p- it's a it's lot attainable. more attainable yeah. Yeah. yeah locking in for 12 weeks that's a long time yeah three months even like. eight weeks is long man yeah like because yeah. they do the eight weeks at the bfts and stuff and I'm yeah just, like, i've never, never signed up to any of that no uh, and so it just include like a meal plan and stuff. Yeah. So it's me- and are they is it custom like 
So is so the challenge includes a is it a custom meal plan for the person or is it a, 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 a say a generic meal plan that's that accompanies With options. yeah mm. so, oh, it has yeah. options so oh, you would have done them. This is another reason why I'm very grateful to be joining the Move Us team because I don't have to like obviously a lot of people ask about the nutrition side of it and Move With Us that's all included as well. So you choose your goals and it sets your macros for you and mm. then it gives you five meals throughout the day to fit those certain macros and you can always change it, swap meals out and adjust values and everything. So, it's like, so they got it sassed. Yeah. And it's, it's work with, uh, work with us. What is that? Move with us. Move with us. Sorry. Move with us. There's the girls on the website, but can guys do it as well? Is it, yeah. is it, so it's for both yeah, it's gen- mm. gender neutral? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Obviously certain programs are like grow your glutes and whatever, but there is, I know it's, a lot of the Move Brothers team are doing the power program at the moment because that's by Liv and it's very strength-based. So, yeah, anyone could do it for sure. Awesome. What awesome. about um, what about mentors? So when you started, were you sort of flying solo, figuring it out? You flicked over to the 3,000 and I think you were saying it wasn't planned. It sort of mm-hmm. just ev- morphed into what it is. Along the way, have you sort of rub shoulders or, or found some mentors that have helped guide you maybe that they've been there before and stuff um i spoke to i don't know if you know katie martin she just joined the sweat team as well oh yeah we sweat so, yeah, yeah yeah she when i was first i think i was at 15k or something um katie yeah she's been in a while and she kind of gave me some guidance because i was kind of freaking out because it was happening so quickly but other than that i kind of just had to figure out on my own, which, yeah, I had no idea um, until management came. I was like, yeah, okay, I know what to do. <laughs> but, um, yeah. What sort of growth did you see from you know, 3,000 to, I think you're at 115 or something now? Yeah. So, February last, I think I hit 10K in February last year. Right. So, that's what? So, so like just yeah, over times a year. 10 in, yeah, in just over 12 months. Yeah. Sheesh. So, did that happen? Was that quick? Compared yeah. to the 10. Was there, was there a catalyst though? Was there something that gave you a kick? Uh, it's just certain posts that go off and then you obviously, it, yeah, it's not linear, but um, uh, yeah. we could do, we, do you remember which one's been your most successful oh, post? It's been a couple. Did you, did you know the formula or what they were about? <laughs> yeah. And it's, then do you try and rinse and repeat it? Is that I the idea? Like, or? Yeah, I feel like. Transformation ones go very well. Transformation mm. photos. Um, oh, the before and after post. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you need to eat a bit again and then <laughs> <laughs> need, to blow, <laughs> yeah. need to blow up. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah. So every time I've posted that, that's blown up a bit too. As, and also when I've had a meaningful caption as well, because people save it or share it. And so, and so, so the more activity you can get on a post obviously the more it's going to get more pushed as well. the more value you add yeah so that's yeah. also comes back into the benefit of adding value not just posting like something that looks yeah, good because look that's when you're probably raking it in those creepy dudes so and when you talk about 115 <laughs> are you talking about instagram yeah, yeah. so what platform what other platform because you mentioned tiktok earlier yeah. and tiktok from what i'm hearing is like that's that's blowing people up so and and you also mentioned I've got a bad habit of asking multiple questions, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask about, yeah, so you're on TikTok and stuff. What's the mm. following like there? Is there much, which one do you like? Because when you're making the content, which one are you thinking about? Are you thinking about Instagram or are you thinking about mm. TikTok sort of thing? I'm always kind of just thinking about Instagram. I kind of forget about TikTok a lot, which I shouldn't because I've been recognized more from TikTok than from Instagram, which is which blows my mind. Um because TikTok is very inconsistent, whereas I feel like Instagram is just, yeah, very consistent. Your followers see your posts all the time. And, yeah, TikTok, I have more followers, but a lot better engagement on Instagram. And what about, you mentioned um, that you're not doing YouTube. Mm. Is there a reason behind that? Because I feel like like that's the biggest video platform on the planet and mm. you're the perfect you know, you're, you're, you've kind yeah. of got all this engagement on these other platforms where you can drive people there. Mm. Is that in the future or is there a reason maybe why you haven't gone down that road? Because you can put the, sh- even if you just put the reels on, right? So you can mm. just repurpose that exact same content yeah. on the tube. 
to put it bluntly, I just haven't been bothered. <laughs> 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 um, but I did. I really want to move to the Gold Coast this year. So my lease ends at the end of the year and I've told myself that I'm not renewing in Brisbane. So, and I've also got a few friends down here that do that already so they can help me. And I've said, once I move down here, I want to start it. Blowing up YouTube. Yeah, that's how you get to know your personality as well. And mm. I feel like that's such an important thing. Yeah. Would you do like vlog style content? Because I know that's almost not out of date, but like. Mm. Do muk- mukbangs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't know what a mukbang is? Do you know what a mukbang is? Yeah. yeah do you yeah. not know what one is? How do you well, know I know that? the word. I know. I've never understood what they, it is. They, 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 they sit and eat in front of the there, yeah. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> then it was a thing, I think, for yeah. a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. yeah. Never heard of it. Well, like I knew. No, I knew, it knew, I knew the word. You have not heard of it, of course. I didn't know, like, exactly. I didn't know what they would sit down and eat. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, shit joke. Sorry about that. Yeah, what, what what kind of content are you thinking? Because I, I guess YouTube is really really um, goes through phases, right? Mm. There's the daily vlogs, and then there's the the reaction videos. Then there was the mukbangs for mm. a bit. There, podcasts are blowing up on there over yeah, right now. That. You know, particularly in America, especially this one. And yeah, well, <laughs> 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 um, have you thought about what kind of content? Is it more fly on the wall, or you're gonna you can do educational stuff on there, but a bit more longer form? Yeah, um, I haven't really thought about it at all. Well, if you need some honest. ideas, you know, like yeah, you get the manager to get in touch. <laughs> You've got the best videographer in the world. Yeah, well. Bonnie, mate. If you're looking, no, he's busy. He's actually busy. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie. He's busy. Annabelle, we're going to go into oh, our go. famous segment, okay. our weekly famous segment. So it's it's called Fish Tank. Mm-hmm. It'll take off a shark tank. But Brucey, he's got a got to got to have an idea from the community, and and he's going to shout it out. Yes, so this is the fish tank. So we have um, our audience writes in um, sort of business pitches mm-hmm. and we sort of evaluate and say whether we're going to invest or keep our money under the mattress. Okay. Um, so this one has come in from Ethan, Ethan Harrison. From and the business. Eighth. Thanks, Ethan. Okay. This one's called AeroStep. So AeroStep is a revolutionary green fitness experience. AeroStep is a treadmill powered energy station harnessing the power of workouts to generate clean electricity. Customers purchase an AeroStep treadmill, which is installed and connected to their solar panels to generate more power to increase their offset or sell back to the grid and earning energy credits while and discounts while exercising. So Ethan will make money on the sale of the treadmills and 10% of the off, offset credits. AeroStep presents a unique opportunity to combine fitness, sustainability and community impact. By investing in AeroStep, you're not only promoting health and fitness, health and wellness, but also can contributing to a greener future. So you make money from running. Does this? Is that a thing? Is that I don't know. Can you new do technology that? from Ethan or? Sounds like it's it sounds new. I mean So you just run and you power your house? Yeah, well I guess you're generating power somehow. You're else. generating power through through your own treadmill, which then can offset your electricity bill. That sounds wow. pretty brilliant if it bloody Yeah. Well, it's on it. I guess on the a only trend, question is it? how much power would you actually yeah. generate from running? <laughs> to be running yeah. for a bit. That's <laughs> always yeah, I, would, I wouldn't <laughs> generate <laughs> much. <laughs> well, I think I think it's almost like a there's 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 those treadmills that people work at home. They put their treadmills under the desk. And oh, the walk. walking desk. Yeah, yeah, they're walking all day. Oh. You, you know, I wonder if you could do it for a bike as well, more like the the mm. spin bikes well, yeah, and like, whatever. Yeah. But I wonder if you can actually do that. Yeah, well, I mean, he's suggesting you I can. Th- I think you can. can. I reckon I've seen somewhere where gyms are I've powered. I've seen like game shows and stuff. Yeah. People riding a bike and stuff, but it takes a lot yeah. to power it. And also, boys, they've also mentioned that they are a bit of money that they need to get started. Oh, they need a bit of investment. Oh, of, course, they? of course they do. Yeah. They need a bank. Ethan's asking for $1.5 million. <laughs> <laughs> hey. For design and development, marketing and initial operations. So design and develop. What were they? Design development. Design development, marketing, and in initial operations. And what's uh what's our share in that? What's our equity in that? Well, he hasn't Did specified. He mention? No, he hasn't specified. But say one point five million. You've got to be. What's the valuation, PK? What do you reckon? Well, it depends, depends, on, depends on the tape. If you're yeah. in that one point five mil, PK, well, how much? Well, are you one point. Uh, we call it fifty percent. So it'd be a three million. Okay, you're saying we'll call it fifty. Well, up 50? We're only running for fifty. You know what I mean? We only invest if we're getting a fair fifty-one. Fifty-one percent. Fifty-one. I don't know. It's it's like a couple of big trends there: fitness and green, S- sustainability, yeah, sustainability. Running. It's on trend. Depends on what trend. the machine looks like as well. You know what I mean? If it needs it's to have all trendy. these pipes and shit, mm. like needs to be plumbed in. I don't know. That's true. I don't know. High like, level, sounding all right. 
Mm. Yeah. What do you but, think, Annabelle? Yeah. I feel like there's something already like it out there. Yeah. And I just don't know how much power you can generate from from running. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if it generates a fair amount, then I think yeah. on paper it sounds really good. Yeah. Yeah. But as we get into the nitty gritty, like and, and the key is how make. much power, how much money you're making, man. Like yeah. no one's buying this thing unless you're making a meaningful amount of money from not having to run. Well, you're not making money. You're, you don't need sorry, to run ultra you're marathons. Saving to, money. You're, yeah, saving you're saving money. Wow. But if we're investing, Let's, we're going to be hopefully making millions. <laughs> But no, no, no. But the, right? but, the, but the person running is making money, right? Because they're well, offsetting they're their power sa- bill. Saving, making money is the same thing. Yeah, yeah. saving, yeah. making. But you don't well, want to run a, you an ultra marathon to save five bucks, right? You want to. It needs to be a meaningful oh, amount for. A, what would Benjamin? What's a meaningful amount for you to oh, jump jump on and give it an hour? Say you a ran day. five k's a day. You right? being the fru- frugal operator, you are. Oh, you want five k's a day? You'd want to save, you know, twenty, thirty bucks for that or something. I reckon, and you'd wow. go. You know, because you're not going to retire on it, but it, it, it give people a reason to actually get one of these machines. 20, 30 bucks a day, that's, you know, that's 150, 200 bucks a week. Oh, th- yeah. So if that's you talk heaps. about, and then depends, he didn't say how much he's going to sell the machines for, right? Because yeah, if true. we knew how much the machines were, then we, and we go cheap. 20 bucks a day and you go, all right, you need to run X amount of days and then you're in the clear as well. Oh, the know? old payback period. Payback man. period, PK. Mm. <laughs> so I, I was thinking you might have been down at like five bucks a little run or something. Something like no, that. No, I don't think anyone's running for five. Man, five bucks, you can't no, even no, get a fucking no, coffee for no, these but days. No, no, but you're you know running I mean? anyway. Like, you're fit. You want to be fit. You're also, but anyway. yeah, but you've got like to invest. Lots of people like oh, to run Oh, and I suppose you're buying yeah. a treadmill anyway as well. So if the tre- if the prices are, you know. <laughs> got to buy a treadmill anyway. Yeah. Is and anyone then, buying treadmills these I days? Know. I feel like that's... A, that's like hey, you what are those? Get your vitamin D outside. Yeah, 100%. yeah. what are those yeah. other machines called? The bionic the... bikes. No, not them. They're cool. The, the, they're like treadmills. <laughs> so you run, but they're not treadmills. They're... Oh, just... the. No, you're running, oh, man. You're the good. curved ones. Yeah. Oh, the S drive. S drives. Yeah, yeah what are body fit? Yeah. Yeah, what are they? S drive. S drives. <laughs> <laughs> they no, suck, man. You power it, and then you can put like the weight or the make it harder. Oh, because they're not powered, right? It's, so it's the, like the, the of, treadmill, like, is a thing that's going, yeah. and when you get off it, it's going to keep going, yeah, right? Yeah, this, thing's this like, thing you got to get on, and you got to try yeah, and it sucks. It does suck, man. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so are we are we investing? Start with you, Annabelle. I'm gonna say no. Sorry, Ethan. Money under the mattress. Okay. <laughs> I'll pass. I, I'm gonna say if I had money to play with, I'd throw I'd throw a dart on this one. Yeah. I did. If I met Ethan, and Ethan convinced uh, me that he could make the machine. And if you could convince me that the price was relative to a normal treadmill and you could make 20 bucks for five or 10 Ks. I reckon if Ethan was an engineer, could be could be talking. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So right. I'm in, I'm in. BD's in. I'm in, man. I'm in for 1.5. <laughs> well done, Ethan. We've got an investor. <laughs> What's he, what am I in for? Aero step. Yeah, and a bit of merch as and well. And a bit of merch. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan's getting a bit of merch. Well done, Ethan. Uh, send your best pitch, uh, business ideas to pitch at littlefishpodcast.com. 80 words, that's about the, be- the, the best bet. And uh, yeah, give us how much money you need in our, our equity. Yeah, that's nice. a, I think we need the equity. Otherwise, we'll assume it's 50%. Yeah. We're going, <laughs> yeah. ha- we're going hard. 50 <laughs> won't. he's taking nothing less than 50. <laughs> no, I that. love it. Nice, uh, nice work, Brucey. Thanks, mate. Annabelle, this has been great. Before we wrap up, just from a selfish perspective, I'm mm-hmm. sort of coming off a bit of a long-term hiatus in the uh, <laughs> fitness space. You know, a couple of years. That's an, COVID, that's an understatement. <laughs> COVID, COVID caught me up and anyway, heaps of kids and stuff. Yeah. But anyway, um, what's your advice, someone getting back into it, running, all that sort of stuff? Because it is a long grind. Like, mm. believe it or not, I was pretty fit back in the day. Oh, um, you, know, you were. Under yeah, 18 best and fairest over here. Yeah, that's 100%. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, having a hiatus, getting back to ground zero mm. and going, all right, now we rock and roll again. Um, what's, what's your advice? I think just don't set really, really high expectations for yourself Start first off because I feel like that's the easiest way to stop and lose track of uh, how you're going. But yeah, just one small step at a time. Even if you commit to two days a week where you're doing something rather than committing to six days flat out, like I'm going to go all guns blazing straight away, you, you're probably going to crash and burn. So just do little bits at a time and um, it'll add up and slowly build up. To quote yourself in my notes here, Annabelle, mm-hmm. do 1% every day and eventually it'll have up. I got that. Is that from, Yeah, I got it from somewhere. From, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Compounds. I feel like that Compounds sounds like an LSKD quote. 
Oh, better. maybe. Well, we're, we're friends with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason, shout out Jason, legend. <laughs> Go loose kids. Yeah, yeah, good. That's yeah, that's great advice. Not to mm. set the bar too high because yeah. the key is just staying on, staying mm. on track. And, and have, I reckon you've got to have a greater purpose than try your rig. You know mm. what I mean? Like oh, yeah. yeah. I yeah, tend yeah. to learn that over the years as well because mm. obviously when I started and I did find that, I personally, I went very hard and I, I think I got down to like, 10%, 9% body fat. And for a girl, that's pretty oh, I've low. I've done all that before. It's shit ass. Yeah. <laughs> you feel no, shit. <laughs> yeah. You feel awful. Yeah. Um, you look tiny, but yeah, yeah. no. Um, and obviously you're weak as. So <laughs> mm. eat and yeah, understand that there's more to life than outside of the gym. Any advice for a few baby cows? Because uh, Peter's calf's a bit torn. <laughs> I hurt my calf. <laughs> <laughs> and that was going back to the baby steps. So. <laughs> I've probably tried to go just a little out bit, the bit quick. Well, it wasn't even that quick, but maybe I was just <laughs> coming from a long way back. But so the calves, yeah. And resting. Louis' advice is good advice as well, I reckon. Where just don't put pressure on speed or anything like mm. that. Just You've start off slow, it, and, and yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. I think one of the biggest things when I train at least is I know that I'll feel better and I want to enjoy it. Mm. Like, I'm not out there flogging myself every day. I'm enjoying it, and yeah, it's good. If yeah. you are coming back after a setback as well, don't have expectations to be exactly where you were when you, before you started injured. Cause obviously yeah. you've lost heaps. So just work at where you are now and just aim to get better than that. Don't that, compare to what you were before. And that's a good point. Cause you've got, still got a good memory. You yeah. know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really great advice. Annabelle, is there anything we've spoken about? A lot of things, you, things you're doing. Is there anything you want to shout out before we, before we bounce or any last message um, for the peeps well, check, out there. Check her out on Move With Us for starters. <laughs> yeah. Get into the yeah. program. Yeah, sign yeah. Up. Get in there. Sign up. Six, week, six week program. If you, if do, you do the challenge and you sign up for the challenge, then you get the full experience. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, just uh, yeah, keep an eye out. More things to come. Unreal. Love it. Awesome. Please, guys, like, share, subscribe. Anyone that's going to get value out of that. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks so much for yeah, bloody for me. getting through the traffic yeah, and that sort of thing. Glad I did. <laughs> dedicated, dedicated business savage here. Um, like, share, subscribe. Anyone that's going to get value. See you at the top. Sorry, Bonnie. See you at the top. <laughs> People want to be part of a winning team. People can find a better version of themselves if they choose. Hmm. You just need to go start some shit. Action is all that matters. Be a man of your word. I think I look back now and I'm like, whoa, that took some guts. Be kind. Be kind. Be kind. See you at the top. New episode every Wednesday.